Well, thank you, Sam and Hikma, and wow. I mean, thank you to all of this year's fabulous awardees. Um, of course, we want to take time today also to recognize the legacies of some of our retiring champions with a special lifetime impact award, including um, some members that I had the pleasure of working with during my time in the legislature. And although we may still learn about a few more who are retiring before filing ends next week, um, I'd particularly like to um, recognize a few people, one of whom is here, Senator Reuven Carlisle from the 36th District. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Reuven on, on foster care issues in particular, but homeless youth issues on just many youth development issues. And Reuven um, single-handedly, determinedly, with a, a laser focus, um, made sure that foster youth had more support to, so they could graduate from high school. Um, and his work with Treehouse and Janice uh, really has moved the needle in Washington State and made us a national leader. So Reuven, just um, thank you for always having a laser focus on collecting the data and making sure that we know what the outcomes are and really having an impact with the resources that we allocate to help youth succeed. Um, Pat Sullivan, Representative Sullivan from the CERT 47th isn't with us today, but he uh, he was, has, has been uh, such a, a um, champion behind the scenes as majority leader and a member of the budget team. Uh, he was my go-to person every year uh, when it when it got to be time to make those hard decisions, and he was always accessible, and he always understood that child welfare, early learning, the needs of children were one of the highest priorities of the caucus, and he stood behind those. So um, I think you know he he uh, will be very, very sorely missed uh, in the sessions ahead. Uh, Representative Lori Dolan in the 22nd, um, talk about a consistent voice for supporting children, youth, and families. As vice chair of, educate, of the education committee and a longtime educator, uh, she just always prioritized children and education in her work and advocated for behavioral health and school safety. And I particularly remember when she fought for a bill to uh, allow parents who had a criminal record to volunteer in their kids' schools. I mean, there was no way for a parent to be able to do that. And she uh, she really fought for a system that would, that would allow for that to happen. Representative Steve Kirby in the 29th has demonstrated his true commitment to his district and kids and families statewide by dedicating over 30 years of his life in public service, including 20 as a state representative. And we have a couple representatives um, who have had a tremendous, three representatives who have had a tremendous impact in their very short tenure in the legislature. Um, representative Emily Wicks in the 38th uh, co-sponsored dozens of CCF's priority bills and prime sponsored legislation that would support children with disabilities and prioritize the safety and well-being of our youngest Washingtonians. Um, and I, I know that Representative Wicks really dove into issues to understand them, particularly in child welfare, which is an incredibly complex system and had a real impact, particularly with her uh, budget proviso supporting first clinic. Representative Kristen Harris Talley in the 37th is such an amazing first time legislator. She was CCF's 2021 champion for basic needs and as vice chair of the Children, Youth and Families Committee, she advocated for many key priorities, co-sponsoring important housing, health and safety bills. Um, I know that she worked to eliminate parent pay for uh, the parents of youth who were in, incarcerated in juvenile justice. 
and was just really appreciated for her um, openness and her commitment to keeping families and children together. And finally, Representative Jesse Johnson in the 30th Legislative District, who was another wonderful first time legislator who was our 2021 champion for juvenile justice reform. As vice chair of the Public Safety Committee, he has really been a powerful champion for equity and uh, in our criminal justice system and has also sponsored um, some of the most important bills in 2021 to ensure youth, young people have access to an attorney when they come in contact with law enforcement, which is going to make a big difference in the outcomes for those youth. Um, I know he worked on family reconciliation and on uh, doula bills and just many bills related to uh, the well being of children, youth, and families. And last but far from least, um, Senator David Frocht from the 46th, who we so appreciate being with us today, has just been a remarkable champion for children for more than 10 years in the legislature. He has sponsored so much legislation um, in so many different areas, but particularly in uh, behavioral health, which uh, have really moved Washington state to a new place. Uh, and his willingness to dig in and understand issues just, um, always uh, was appreciated. He, he went to actually a dependency court before he was elected. He went and sat in on dependency court and started the long process of really trying to understand the child welfare system and its complexity and, and worked very hard to address uh, the, the tremendous challenges in that system. Uh, so we're just so grateful uh, to him for his work for children on many levels. And I, uh, I particularly appreciated his support to assure that we have early learning facilities across this state uh, who can, so we can have children getting quality preschool and childcare uh, in many of the areas of the state where there just are not facilities. So, Thank you, Senator Frocht, and I'm gonna I'm going to pass this over to you and just um, really wish you well and uh, just send tremendous gratitude to you. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Ruth. That was incredibly gracious and uh, incredibly kind, and I'm just so pleased to be here with my colleagues. All my colleagues from the legislature, particularly my colleagues from the Senate, who I've gotten to know so well over the last few years. Um, Reuven has been one of my best friends and one of my great partners, um, all of our partners on foster youth and on so many issues, as you mentioned. Uh, Yasmin uh, Trudeau is an incredible intellect, a brilliant woman who is going to do amazing things. And I think you will find her to be an incredible champion. Emily Randall, who um, was recognized and, and well-deserved. And of course, no one's even mentioned Claire Wilson, who only set up the best uh, state childcare system in the entire country. Um, and so I've been really blessed the last few years to work with all of these wonderful people. Um, but I can say with candor, with honesty, that the two mentors that I had um, in the legislature, one within and one without, were uh, was were Ruth Kagey and Lori Lippold, who's joined us here. And Ruth, of course, on the inside, I served one year in the House, and uh, she taught me a lot about how to deal with the Senate. And then when I went to the Senate, uh, I heard a lot from Ruth about how to deal with, uh, with uh, friends on both sides of the aisle and how to get things done. And I will tell you, the one thing that I think all of us can take away is that, and for those who are advocating, is that there is an inside game and there's an outside game to getting things done. And the speaker knows this and all of us, uh, Representative Santos and those of us who've been around for a long time uh, know that um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of show in politics, but the real go is what happens on the inside. And, uh, and Ruth Kagey was a player on the inside and has taught many of us over the years on how to fight for those things, how to negotiate, how to push and push and push and not say no 
And then when you have to give a little bit, make sure you get something uh, back that makes sense for, uh, for kids. And she's done that. And I can say um, without her, I mean, there's just so many, I was thinking, I was thinking here as we went through um, just this last year that Jess and Hikma uh, were pointing out to us the, the bills, there were a hundred different bills that were, you all were advocating for, 24 of which passed across a wide variety of things. And I think uh, Representative Callan mentioned the intersectionality of these issues and how everything affects it, or maybe it was Representative Berg, and I apologize if I got that wrong, but all of, both of whom, everything affects everything else. And I was just trying to, I was trying to think last night as I was preparing to say a few words here, just what we did this last year or the last few years, we, we had the bill on donor breast milk coverage that Senator Trudeau championed, the diaper subsidy bill that um, uh, uh, my friend uh, from uh, Tacoma sponsored. Um, all the bills related to guns and gun safe storage uh, that have been sponsored over the years that were so, so, so vital. Um, behavioral health ones that I've worked on with Representative Callan, who was a great leader. And we had the, the chance not only to work together on the um, capital side, uh, but also on the um, behavioral health side as well. And we worked in really close contact this year and she's, she's incredible. So um, the Bright Futures built from a few years ago. And then of course, the early learning facilities that you mentioned, Ruth, I don't think people realize we, we put in in the last two years, $60 million in funding for early learning facilities across the state, $60 million. None of that would have happened without the advocates and people who wanted to, to push these, uh, these expenditures. And, uh, and that means getting the right people elected who care about this and understand the need that when you have to fight for these uh, dollars in, in tight and sometimes less tight budget environments, you have to make this a priority. This is a priority in the country and they're not doing anything in DC. We're doing it all here in the States. And that's just one example. So um, it's, this organization does incredible. And what I hope you will do um, as, we, as we go away from this is in addition to, I want to say thank you for the recognition, but also uh, please spread the word to your um, friends, to your colleagues about this incredible campaign fund and why this is something if people are not that engaged in politics, but they care about these issues, they should really come to and get involved in and contribute some money and get the right people elected who are gonna prioritize these issues. You know, uh, the last thing I'll, I'll teach, I'll leave you with in 2010, 11, nobody knew what ACEs were. Nobody knew what ACEs were. And everybody's nodding their head. We all know what ACEs are, adverse childhood experiences, right? That was something that people had to be educated about, but you had people now receptive who go to conferences because of the kind of advocacy that this organization supports. And everybody talks about these, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, everybody acknowledges how important uh, that concept is to our public policy. And none of that happened until we were organized and you all were organized. And so uh, there's, much, um, there's much work to do, but much of that has been done. And I would just say, uh, again, thank you. And please uh, be sure to uh, donate generously and please be sure to, to uh, pass the word. And, uh, and I look forward to, as a former senator, to joining former Representative Kagi and, uh, and helping to support this organization in the future. So thank you.